Kevin Wall. Broadcasting live from the world-famous Las Vegas Strip. Great to have you with us. It's AM 670 KMZQ and live and local. And uh, great to have in studio uh, Barack Zilberberg. He is a Republican candidate for governor. He wants to replace Steve Sisolak, and he thinks he's the man to do it. He joins us. Barack, how you doing? How you doing, Kevin? How's it going? You know, I'm, I'm so enthusiastic of this as far as this moment. I'm here with you in the studio, and I believe it's your first time. And it is. And it yeah. is. And it you is. know what? This, this is great. This is a great opening. It's great energy. I love it. And we're starting a new horizon. A new horizon. I'm with you. Yes. I'm with you. Uh, I, I want to ask you something that I get asked about on a regular basis. There are people that are contemplating uh, class action lawsuits. There's all kinds of stuff. And it all involves the eviction moratorium. Um uh, is simply put, it's not fair. I mean, it's choosing sides, which I think is wrong for for politicians to do, but it's it's really unfair to the landlords who have a, a personal investment. Sometimes their life savings. Yeah, basically, uh, people are over leveraged in their properties. What happens is is uh, the government makes decisions on the basis of people. You know, basically on the the private sector. So basically, uh, what happens is, is they're, they're, they're calling stances and shutdowns and mandates and all kinds of stances that they're, they're interpreting into our society and it's trickling effect into society. But let's talk about the, uh, eviction moratoriums. Why should the private sector hold and house as far as people individuals on the basis of the government's decisions. That's not fair. So a tenant is not paying, okay, their rent. They have mortgages as far as people, property owners, landlords, homeowners. They're renting out their homes, and they have mortgages. They have utilities. Well, utilities, usually the tenant pays. But needless to say, property taxes, all these functions, where is the accountability? So they have to subsidize the people in, in their homes, in their properties. That's not fair. Now, I own property in Los Angeles, California, here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and in New York. Given the fact I have people that are not paying me rent, is that fair? I mean, should I subsidize those people, you know, on on. on on our accounts, I mean, is that fair? And and then you have Governor Newsom over there, which he has vineyards and he has properties and he has businesses, I'm sure, and also um, our current governor has. Did they ever shut down their businesses? Why are they are they above the law? You know, is that fair to have their businesses functioning, okay, and ours down, and we have to, as far as uh, you know, accommodate their decisions? You think that's fair, Kevin? Well, and uh, this is what I don't think is fair. That government gets to decide who wins and who loses. And this governor, this governor, uh, Steve Sisolak, has done that time and time again. Uh, you know, if, if you own Lee's Liquors, you weren't allowed to uh, uh, sell liquor or to be open. Uh, if you were Albertsons, you could sell all the liquor you wanted out the front door. And, and and again, it's determining winners and losers. And I'm not sure that the government should be picking winners and losers. No, no. Uh, basically, not only that, they're they're printing out all this artificial money, right? And now they want to go ahead and sign a 3.5 trillion dollar infrastructure bill, right? Now we're printing more money, and the money is becoming artificial. Seriously. So what's happening is, not only that. I mean, if you, if you think about it, people are getting unemployment checks. As, as we've been discussing, you know, Kevin, they're sitting on their couches there. They're watching TV. They're getting unemployment. They're comfortable. And yet, you know, us taxpayers and all this printed monopoly money is getting printed into the circulation of of what's what's going on. You know, and that, that's that's un- unbelievable what's going on. Okay, but you've and and, and I've, I've I've looked at your campaign literature. You've taken a very hard line against some of these people, and you say that we should essentially cut them off. Yeah, I think we have to cut the uh, bing, uh, umbil- umbilical cord off. You know, that's it. The money supply they got to get off. They got we got to cut the unemployment. Listen, there's there's people out there or companies and whatnot. There's shortage of labor, guys. All of you out there, there's a shortage of labor, and there's jobs out there. 
And you guys need to, we need to cut the unemployment checks sent out to you. I'm sorry to tell you, and you guys need to go back to work. You know, you need to support yourself. Okay, we need to be self-sufficient here. And uh, we need to, as far as go to the objectives. Now, let's talk about the Delta variant. Delta variant, uh, that's as of the vaccinations, and it's proven. Over in Israel... Everybody, 87% of the population has been vaccinated. But yet, you know, they have 7,500 cases a day. You know, the most in the world. So how can you explain that the vaccinations do well? They don't do well. This is all an excuse. And it's just a matter of people, they're, they're, they're just they're using health in order to diminish our economy, to diminish ourselves. People are sitting home, they're depressed. Uh, they're they're basically in, in in the mindset that the world is over and it's not over. Our world has just begun, you know. And we are we are alive. We are not dead. I want to ask you though, because this this is one of those things where uh, maybe it's too early to do this, but that we have to find out. Uh, and make accountable those that are responsible for all the problems we've had with the pandemic. Uh, there have been so many mistakes made. Uh, 700,000 Americans died. Uh, 15,000 of them were New Yorkers who the governor sent to their death in, in the uh, uh, nursing homes. Yeah, I tell you, uh, uh, that Governor Como he's a joke. And also de Blasio is a joke as far as they're both jokes, Okay. Not only their jokes, but as far as Gavin Newsom and this guy Sisolak here is a joke. Okay, they're all in the same party. Okay, uh, Como is left. Basically, he's gone. You know, there was allegations or whatnot. He's gone. But the thing is, is they're they're corrupt. They're all corrupt. The corruptness needs to go. We need to clean house here. Okay. Basically, we've got to clean the territory because there's a lot of communism and socialisms that's taking place in our nation, you know, and we've got to get rid of that because that is not about our constitutional rights. That's not the core of our country. Our country has no interpretations whatsoever in regards to these type of factors or interpretations of communism or socialism. Again, uh, Barack Zilberberg joining us, Republican candidate for governor. And uh, one of the things that uh, I know you've talked about in your campaign, and that is that we as Republicans need to uh, rid ourselves of the so-called rhinos. Yes. Um, if there's a place to do it, it's got to be in, in the primary process, because once you get to a general election, you have to fall in line behind whoever the Republican nominee is. Uh, how, how do we do that? You're saying in regards to please? Uh, can you rephrase that? Uh, you, you were uh... no, no. I was I was simply saying that that uh, uh, rhinos uh, are out there, but okay. the, but 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 the problem is that the the time to do that is during the primary, when when we weed out the you know the, the candidates. Yes. Well, it's bef- it's before even we have to identify this now ahead of time. You know, it's not even, I mean, right now is the time to identify who are the rhinos and who are the ones that are disrupting our party. Now, I could mean, I could name right now many of them, but I won't do that at this moment. Okay. Uh, I will give respect. I still will respect, you know, people that say that they are Republicans. Okay. But we need to identify. And also there's a, there's infiltrated money that is going in from uh, the Democratic side, you know, to a lot of the gubernatorial candidates that I'm running in, with. In, in this race? In this race, yeah. Will and you be naming names any time I will soon? name, I will. I will name, but I will not start naming now, okay? Fair enough. Just out of respect. You people who are the gubernatorial candidates that are running, that are rhinos and Democrats... You don't belong. You have to get out of this race. Let us, as far as uh, take back our party, and let's take back our state. Our state is red. It's not blue. We, we're, we're not here in disruptions of any sort of party that disrupts 
our interpretations as a Republican Party. Uh, we're going to talk about election integrity. And, and can we have a fair election, uh, whether it be the gubernatorial primary or a Senate uh, a primary or a general election? Can we have uh, voter integrity here in Nevada. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up on AM 670 KMZQ. Final minutes with Barack Zilberberg. I want to talk about the election coming up. Uh, You're going to be a part of it, obviously, uh, running in the Republican uh, primary for governor. Um, And the question is, after everything that has gone by, uh, all of the legislation that that occurred during the 81st Nevada legislature and beyond, uh, do you think you can get a fair shot at, at this? Do you think that uh, voter integrity will allow for a free and fair election? Yes. Basically, uh, we have no election integrity now. There's uh, obviously mail-in ballots, you know, that are uh, being bundled in, in, in six, seven, in one household. When you have, as far as one legitimate, as far as a citizen and uh and a person over 18 years of age. Uh, and and uh, mail-in ballots are meant for overseas as far as military uh, personnel and uh, uh, people serving overseas. They send in their mail-in ballots. Uh, it's not a matter of just sending mail-in ballots, all of us, and then people who are deceased, you know, are getting mail-in ballots as well. Okay, Mail-in ballots has to be tossed out the window. No more. Only for people who are, are military, you know, overseas, they have the, uh, they they could bring it in, bring it all in. Uh, in regards to the machines, we need to study the literum as, well, as far as the the uh, the interpretations of our machines. You know, as far as how are the machines interpreting the votes, um, we need to understand the logistics of uh, you know how everything is being accounted for. You know, I believe uh, we're lacking uh, election integrity by far. Is, 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 is this an organized effort, do you think? Is this the Democrat National Committee uh, or is this George Soros? Who is it that's pulling the strings on this on this yeah. election integrity? Yeah, thing? it is the Democratic Party and it's Soros behind it. And there's many others of elites. Uh, and I'm not going to mention names, but. You know, there's many, many people behind this, you know, that want to overturn everything to their fortunes and to their advantage, and that's wrong. Uh, It's for the people. We are for the people and by the people and with the people. And uh, we are the voice. We are the nation. We are the United States of America. Uh, Basically, uh, nobody is above the law, and we all need a fair shake, you know. According to our Constitution, everybody needs a fair shake, and we're where equality is number one. Now, let me ask you, um, as governor, uh, what what would be some of your ideas of, of how we clean up our election system? I mean, uh, we've talked a lot about the Secretary of State and purging uh, uh, folks that, that are deceased, people that have moved to uh, Georgia, uh, and they're still somehow they're still on the rolls. Uh, what is there that a governor can do uh, to, to to fix this problem of voter integrity? Well, like I said, you know, we need to, as far as, uh, we need to show photo IDs, you know, and polling, and, and go to polls, you know, and uh, make sure, I don't even like machines, personally. I like you as far as to go ahead and poke in a vote, you know. Uh, that's what I like, personally, like we did back in the days, you know. But, but 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 then you end up with with hanging chads and all the stuff that we saw in 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 the presidential election, um, you know, in Florida. I mean, it doesn't it, you know going back in time and just you know uh, a pencil mark or uh, hanging chads is that going to fix it? No, I'm just saying you know that's how we did back in the days. That's how we had the the integrity of our elections back then. Everything was you know all authentic. And it was real, you know. People actually uh, identified themselves. They were citizens of the United States. You know, they're not illegals. Um, I don't know why illegals need to or they have the privilege to vote when they're not citizens. I don't know how these mail-in ballots and all the logistics go out to uh, illegal 
immigrants. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. The whole thing doesn't make sense. Not only that, uh, you know, the old fashioned, the cord, the old fashioned days where everything was authentic. I think that's the true America. I want to ask you in our final couple of minutes, uh, because every candidate needs something. Um, and, and people that are listening to this right now and are saying, man, this guy really has some great ideas. I want to know more. What is it you need from uh, the people of Nevada uh, at this early uh, uh, point in the in the campaign? Well, basically, um, I'm for the people, by the people, with the people. Uh, it'd be nice if you can invest into my campaign for a brighter future here in Nevada. I know I can get the job done, and I'll do it with my heart, my passion, my soul, and everything within. And I'll be transparent. I'll tell you the truth of every interpretation that I encumbered, and, and I'll present it with transparency. I'm not a corrupt politician. You know, I'm a true patriot, and I love the United States. I love Nevada, and I'm for Nevada. Battle born. Battle board Nevada. What is it, though, that you need? Do you need folks that will put yard signs up or will volunteer or walk neighborhoods uh, or just uh, would, would donate? What is it you need? Well, we need uh, we need donations. We need a lot of support. We need as far as, yeah, uh, volunteers. Volunteers. You go onto my website, www.brockzilberberg.com. That's brockzilberberg.com. B a r a k z i l b e r b e r g dot com. Go in there, and there's a volunteer button. There's a register to vote button. Please register to vote, Republican. We need much help. We need, as far as to unify our party, we need also to turn the state to red, and we need to take our freedom and our constitutional rights back. So there is a register to vote as well. And furthermore, uh, beyond the register to vote. Uh, there is a uh, attribution button for volunteer and for um, uh, donations. It is great to have you in studio. Uh, thank you for coming by. And uh, I know you're going to be crisscrossing the state. I know you're going to be traveling a lot and seeing uh, all 17 counties before we're done. Thank you so much for taking time out of a, a busy schedule. And I know we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for having me on in, in the show, in the studio. Thank you so very much. Barack Zilberberg, a Republican candidate for governor. Coming up, Tommy Hicks. We're going to get the national perspective on what's going on in our nation's capital uh, from the uh, national co-chair of the Republican National Committee, Tommy Hicks. All that and more coming up on AM 670 KMZQ.